our next segment is Steven with a review of the new film, Back to the Future. Hey Nathan, are you sure that's written right? He's, he's nodding, but doesn't Steven know that Back to the Future was... Just shut up, I want to see what goes down. Take it away, Steven. I'm talking about, of course, Back to the Future. You know, this little indie flick was in theaters a week or so ago, and I'm kind of confused why it didn't get a wider release. It only showed like twice. You see, it's this period piece that takes place in the 80s, but there's a time travel element in it too. Oh wait, oh, oh I'm sorry, I just spoiled the movie for all of you. Oh man. Oh. Oh, this is heavy. Uh, but apparently, I've just been informed that this movie isn't a period piece. It actually came out in 1985, which makes it a re-release of a classic, I must say. Hmm. Back to the Future has aged pretty well, though. AMC did a two-show re-release of the film in their theaters using a pristine digital print. I gotta say, all the visuals and effects look great on the big screen, and the story is still compelling 25 years later. Since this movie's been out for two and a half decades, decades I guess there's really no need for spoiler alerts anymore. So, this movie is about Marty McFly, a teenager in Hill Valley, California. His friend, Dr. Emmett Brown, has built a time machine out of, you guessed it, a DeLorean. Ah, those gold wing doors, stainless steel constructions, and of course, the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. So, some angry Libyans kill Doc for ripping them off, and in an effort to lose them in a car chase, Marty accidentally hits 88 miles per hour and goes back 30 years. Now stuck in 1955, he has to work with a younger version of Doc Brown to generate 1.21 gigawatts, previously generated through stolen plutonium, and then go back to the future, hence the title. So they must harness a bolt of lightning that's predict predicted to hit the town clock tower at exactly 10.04 p.m. to generate the power and send him back. During all this, Marty finds out that he's interfered with his parents' first meeting, and now his teenage mother, Lorraine, has the hots for him instead of his father, George. After a couple failed attempts at becoming Biff's newest enemy, Marty devises a plan to get his father and mother to fall in love at the Enchantment of the Sea dance. Biff interferes and Marty's nerdy dad works up the courage to finally knock Biff out and win Lorraine's affection. Marty has to ensure they stay together by playing guitar at the dance, and he goes a little overboard with a little bit of 80s rock that they just aren't ready for in 55, but their kids are going to love it. So, Marty gets back to the future thanks to some heroics by Doc, and he finds out that he's changed the future for the better. Doc survives the attack, his parents are good looking, and now more in love than ever. And now Biff has been downgraded from being George's boss to his car washer. Well, it all ends well with a good lead into the sequel. I can only hope that they give the same theatrical treatment that they gave the original. And with that review out of the way, if you're ever going to build a time machine out of a car, why not do it with some style? <laughs>